Hello, John here again, and we are here to uh, unbox this. It's been a while since I've been done an unboxing, but the reason why we're doing this is I suggested in my to my patrons that um, while we are thinking about doing the port of um, Hunchback to uh, the 64, as in we're going to clone it and write it from scratch, that we might practice on here. Now, what I mean by practice on here is probably is mean, meaning that we use the Python language which has an inbuilt game extension to try and see if we can work out the game mechanics for the game. So I spent some of the patron money and found this and it's a Raspberry Pi 4B 4 gig of RAM starter pack and I bought it because it was really cheap off Amazon. Amazon were having a deal and I think quite a few of my patrons had uh, got in there as well and the whole thing should have been about 130, 130 quid. The whole thing was like 75 and so I thought right I'm having a bit of that and, um, and the reason I thought I'd have a bit of that is because I do have the other versions you know. I've got a Raspberry Pi 3B. I also have the Raspberry Pi 2. Also, I have the Raspberry Pi Zero, um, Zero W, and the Raspberry Pi 1. But I can't find them. I've just recently moved, and I've still not found half the stuff. But because I've got these two, I thought I'd get this. Now I've only been playing with this, I mean this one I use as my Vic emulator, it boots straight into a Vic 20. Um, this one, as you can see I've got a little gadget on that allows me to hot swap the memory card, and that's the 3. But the 4 is like 3 times faster, can do an awful lot more, dual screen, and they reckon you could use it as a desktop. Yeah, but we're not going to be using it for that sort of thing. We're gonna we're gonna mess around with it. We're going to uh, program on it, and if I can do it, I'm gonna make this into a 6502 development environment as well. I've been playing with seeing if I can do it, and I think it is possible. But saying that. Let's open her up, shall we? So it comes in a very nice box. Yeah. Very sturdy. I mean, the other pies just came in a flimsy plast uh, brown box. And here we go. The Raspberry Pi. And just looks like the other one. So I'll take it take it out. Now, the, re the big thing about this is the 4 gig of RAM there, the super duper CPU, USB 3, look at that, 6 gig of transfer and the USB controller is no longer sharing with the network. Which is a bit of a problem when you've got a Raspberry Pi 3 and you use it as a NAS drive. Because when you want to talk to it, you talk to it through the network, but you've got a portable hard drive plugged into the USB. And eventually it just slows everything down. So this is the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to put it in there and we're going to set it up. So let's put that there. Inside here, I'm hoping we got a power supply. There we go. Oh, yeah. 
So we've got a power supply, standard power supply. Oh, oh, HDMI cable. HDMI cable. I bought one of those thinking it didn't have one. And we have a case, air vents. Sorry about the lighting. Yeah. Oh, another HDMI cable. So we got two, so we can run the dual monitors. And then, oh, we got some little fan to put on it, so when we switch it on. Got some heat sinks. Heat sinks for the, whoops, heat sinks for the um, CPU. Noobs, but I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna start from scratch. And screwdriver. Wow. Oh, what's this? Oh, a card reader. Oh, I say, I got a card reader. USB C card reader. Oh, cool. And a quick guide. Right then, let's get this thing plucked together. Right, where do we start? With the Raspberry Pi, of course, John. Right, let's turn it upside down. So, you guys, it's upside down. For me, it's not. Right. So we need to put these on. Let's see if we can zoom in here. Can we zoom in? All right, let's get out of the way. Put that there. Nice. So we got the, here we go. Got the heat sinks. And we've got three of them that looks on it. Right. So that must go there. That one must go there. And that one's got to go there. Of course, that's a bit of a hefty piece of metal. Right then, let's get these fellas on. Now I got no nails, so let's see if we can peel this thing. Oh yeah, there we go. There's number one. Stick it on. That'll do. straight what we'll do just got to protect it let's uh, move them out of the way so we've got the three heat sinks on all right case time Ooh, it's got a camera socket that they go in there like so maybe put the ports in first that can't be right get the audio jack in Click. 
looks about right. Puts are sort of in place. Yeah, I think that's in place now. So I presume the black ones. Let's have a look. Where's the manual? Da 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 da. <laughs> Doesn't tell me how to plug it, how to set it up. Oh well. So we will put the black ones. on the pipe. So we got four. Yeah, four. So we'll put one in there. Right, one spare. Put that in there. Where's my fan? There it is. So it says four fan. So I wonder which way we put it on. So that's for the camera, so that must be for the fan. So do we put it on that way? Or do we put it on that way? I don't know. Right, which way is it going to turn? We do that way, that's going to suck air away, but that would blow it. We don't know which way it goes. I would say that that's going to suck air away. So if we put it on that way, it's going to blow it on it. Right. Let's do that. Put it on so it blows on. Question is, put it that way around. So we have as much cable as we can play with. Right then, let's get this thing plugged in. Put that in there. Don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. Oh, rubbish everywhere. Right. So, where's my, um, where's my diagram? The Pi GPIO. Let's put it the right way around so you can see it. So we're going to put it on the 5 volts. So we're looking at pins, ooh, 4 and 6 I think. Not put it on the 3 volts, I mean you could do. We want maximum power. So, red on the second pin, black on the third pin. Right, so do it that way. Red on the second pin, black on the third. So side by side in there. Uh -uh. Uh, 
There we go. One Raspberry Pi. Now, I um not to um we'll do it on the ethernet and we'll use where are you we'll use this so this is a sim hot swapper so it's got two sims in it uh, not sims micro sds and we'll just plug it straight in like so so we don't have to mess around getting the uh, sim cards out so let's make a sim card I'm quite looking forward to it but messing around with this right I'll see you in a moment right now we've built the Raspberry Pi we're going to have to um, set up the SD card so I'm not going to use the noob system on the SD card we're going to build one from scratch because we need to learn how to do this because when we do retro Pi and a few other things like the uh, C64 operating system emulator and the Z uh, ZX Spectrum operating system emulator we're going to have to learn how to apply patches, um, not uh, patches, images to SD cards. So, first things first, we have to download the latest image from Ras the Raspberry uh, Pi organization. So, if you go into the raspberrypi.org, click on downloads and then Raspbian, you can then download the various varieties of Buster. Now, we're downloading the full fat, everything you can ask for version which is this one so I've already downloaded that because I didn't want to bore you with it downloading the next thing you want is this thing called etcher and etcher allows you to flash an image to an SD card and it's dead easy you just download it there are many different uh, versions of it you can get the Windows portable one Mac and Linux versions and I've already done that as well. Didn't want to bore you, but here we go. So this is this is where we are. So there's Etcher, and there is the image that I've just downloaded. So we're gonna fire up Etcher. Here we go. So. We're going to select the image, which is this one, and then we're going to make sure it's the 32 gigabyte SD card, and it's the only SD card that's sat in the machine, so this is the only thing. And then now the boring bit where it flashes. So I'm going to press flash, and then I'm going to fast forward it so it's nice and quick for you. Here we go. Right, so I'll fast forward through it. What it does, it just but it flashes the uh, SD card and then validates to make sure it's all right. And then what it does, it mounts the SD card again and you will get this message. Just say cancel and okay. And say cancel to that one. So once we've done that, we need to modify the boot partition of the SD card because we want to be able to uh, talk to the Raspberry Pi once it's booted up. 
So what we have to do is find the boot uh, partition of the SD card. So I'm just going to pop the card out. And then I'm going to pop it back in. See what it, here we go. So I'll cancel that. Don't want that. Here we go. This is the bit we want. So we'll cancel that bit as well. And what you do is you put in a brand new empty file. And you just call it SH8, SSH. Press enter. Yep. And we just have a empty file with no bytes in it. And what happens is when the Raspberry Pi boot boots up, because we're going to boot it up headless, we're not going to plug into a monitor or anything like that. We're just going to stick it on the network, switch it on, and boot it up. It will then, auto, because that file's there, it will automatically enable the SSH protocol for us so we can talk to it. And the way we can talk to it is you need to download this program called Putty. So you go on putty.org, and it's a self, it's a portable um, exe file for Windows. You don't need anything else, just download the file, and you just run it. So we'll run it here there we go and we'll get command we'll get a command box up and running because we need to find out what IP address the uh, Raspberry Pi is so we'll start it up oops I'm going to tell it to keep trying so while that's doing that I'm going to pop the SD card out ooh Oh yeah, that's right. I ain't plugged it in yet. Um, so I'm going to take the SD card out. I'm going to plug it into the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to switch it on. And then we're going to try and find out what IP address it is. So just give me a second. Right. The Pi switched on. And the fan's wearing away. It's winding up like a turbo charger. So let's see if we can... Let's see if it's got to the point. It take, when it boots up for the first time, it takes longer for it to boot up because it adjusts the partition it, and it does some other things. So let's see if we uh, get any response back. Here we go. Right then, stop that. So we should be able to put it straight. Should be able to put it straight into that. So if we put the IP address in, so it's one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot two twenty. Press enter, and you say yes to that. And we're going to log in. So the default user is Pi. Password is Raspberry. Ah, I probably didn't type that in right. Oh, I did. Cool. So there we are. See where we are. Right, we're in, we're in the Pi home directory. So now we're. Oh, that black on black is getting a bit confusing. Here we go. So now, let's see, can I expand this? Let's expand that. Can I expand it that way? There we go. So, we need the Pi to understand any drive that we put in there. So, we need to uh, get install the NTFS system. So, as normal with Raspberry Pis, it's sudo super user do apt get install and we want the ntfs-3g oh it says it's already installed and we have a newer version excellent right now we need to do for xfat so we'll do the same again because we need to be able to load in normal 
drives, and that's XFAT dash fuse. Here we go, say yes please. Cool. Now, what we want to what we want to do. So that's now um, allows us. So if we put a, a USB stick into the Raspberry Pi and it's formatted in NTFS or XFAT, which is the two default operating uh, formats for Windows, the Raspberry Pi will understand it. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to be able to share part of the hard drive because it's crucial that we can share the hard drive. Now, to do that, we need to install a service called Samba, yeah? And um, to do that, like before, su you know, sudo apt get install, but instead of doing xfat, we need to do Samba, I think it is, and Samba common, common bin. Samba common bin. So that's going to install Samba and the common bin libraries. So let's get this installed. This might take a while. Right. So if you and if your computer gets an IP address, so yes, we want to do that. So yeah. Right then, now we need to uh, give Samba a password for the Pi user. So we have to do the same thing again, super user do, and then we need to say SMB password or WD add Pi. So, um, press enter, so now you need to give it a password. Ooh, that doesn't help. And repeat it. Excellent. So that's now added the Pi user to the Samba sharing system. And now what we need to do is we need to uh, create an area on the drive that we want to share. So if I do ls, so that's in Magpy and pwt p pwd. That's in the Pi directory. So if I do CD documents, ooh, okay. Okay, CD Pi. So it hasn't got one, okay. So right, what we'll do is we'll create, make a directory, uh, make dir, and we'll call this shares, shares. Hmm. No. No. We'll make a directory called documents. Documents. And the reason why I'm saying that is because uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding source code to this machine. We're going to be editing source code. So we'll do documents, then we'll do create a directory, make directory called uh, shares, cd shares, and then we'll make a directory where we're going to put everything in it. So. Um, or do we? No, we'll leave that. So, we need to set the permissions of that. Yeah, we need to set the permissions of that. Okay, remove shares. Oh, remove shares. <laughs> right. 
So this time we're going to make the directory, but we're going to apply directory permissions on it. So we have to be in super user. And so make DIR and we're going to apply the permissions of 0777. I have no idea what that means. If anybody in the Linux world that watches these videos would like to educate me on what all these numbers mean, please do so because it just baffles me. And we're going to call it shares again. Or we'll call it share. Yeah. There we go. So if I do LS now, can you see we've, got, we've now got a share with that funny green and blue? That means it's got specific permissions. And now what we need to do is we need to attach that directory into the Samba system. And to do that, we need to be in super user mode. And there's a text editor called Nano. So we need to run that. And it's in directory ECT Samba. And it's smb.conf for config. Now, if you get an empty file, it means you've typed in the wrong path. If you get this, it means you've typed the right thing in. And so best thing to do is just scroll all the way down to the bottom and then type in the share name. So we want to call this pi share. And then in that segment, you can put comments. And in this one, we're going to call it pi share ink directory. And then the path to that shared directory is home. We use a pi documents share. And that's the path, that's the directory we've just done. So we have to tell it whether we want it about browsable, browsable. Is that how you, is that how you spell it? No, that's how you spell it. And so we want to say yes, we want that browsable. Um, do we want it writable? And the answer to that one of yes, of course, we want to write to it. Um, only guest. Well, nope. We don't want people who are just guests on it. So now we need to create the mask, which is what we give it to start with, which is 0777. And we want to be able to give and, and do the directory mask, which is 0777. Do we make it pro public? Nope. Right, so and the reason why we make it don't make it public is because then, um, if you make it not public, it will challenge you and ask you for the password, which is the password we've just created. So once you've done that, you just go Control X, yes please, enter. Right now the system won't do anything until you reboot. So super user, reboot. That's it. So we've lost it. So now we just ping it until it comes back. So we'll just wait. I ignore that. We know what the IP address is. It should be the same one when it comes back. There we go. We'll give it a few more seconds to re-establish. I'll do. Right. So we should be able to re should be able to reattach. Restart session. There we go. Pi. Ross. Very. There we go. So we're now back. So we should be able to see this directory. So I'm going to fire up File Explorer, and so we should be able to see Raspberry Pi slash share. 
Oh, we called it pie share, didn't we? There we go. So that is now the share within the Raspberry Pi. Now, to make this a bit more easier to use, we're going to add some more. We're going to add some software to it. Now, the first thing we have to do is always make sure the Raspberry Pi is up to date because the image that you may download may may be out of date because uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation I think only refresh it every four or six months. So you do sudo app get update. So it's going to look through, it's going to see if there's anything that we need to install and update. So there's a few, it's 13 meg there, so 50, 60%, 70, 80, 90. Here we go, so three packages it reckons. So it's going to look through, check what we've got compared to what's online done right so we do the same thing again but this time we do dist upgrade now we've done the update now we're going to do the upgrade so here we go now this may take some time but it doesn't look like there's a lot so we'll just what I'll do is I'll let it speed up and I'll see you when it's finished. Right, there you go, it's updated. So now we have a fully updated Raspberry Pi. The only thing that's wrong is because it's headless, we need to be able to remote into it so we can see what we're gonna do. So first things first, let's see if we can get into the config. Now I think that's raspberry-config. No, it isn't. Oh, maybe I need to do that. Nope. Right, let's find. Raspy config. sudo raspy conf dash config okay so we'll do that oh put two p's in guys why didn't you tell me there we go right so what we need to do is in i think it's in interfacing options we need to vnc and we need to turn it on there we go okay come out of that because we don't need it anymore and what we need to do, because it's headless, it won't detect the HDMI um, request from the, say, the monitor or the TV. So what will happen is when we VNC into it now, we'll just get the default size, which we can do. Let's try it, shall we? Let's find VNC. There we go, VNC. So, Raspi, continue. So type in the password. There we go. Really small, don't know why. Display currently, currently can't show desktop. How wonderful is that? And that's because it didn't, didn't find the HDMI. So what we need to do then is we need to then tell it and fool it. And what we need to do is we need to edit the config. 
So we need to do sudo nano and we need to go into boot slash config.txt. And in here, where the width here, buffer width, we need to unrem them and we'll leave it. We'll leave it at that. And then force, we need to look for force. It might already be on. There we go, that one. Need to unrem that one as well. So go X, yes, enter, sudo, reboot. That's it, it's rebooting. So we'll do this again. So we know when it comes back on. And there she blows. Right, so stop that. We'll see if we can restart the uh, session. Yep. Bingo. So we're now in. Excellent. Share still there. Right, so let's find fire up VNC and see if we can see the desktop. Hey, look at that. Lucky lucky. Hey. Not bad for a first timer, is it? Right. Cool dear. That's a big, big, big screen there. So we're going to say yes, we're in the UK, British keyboard, change the password, it's this board, desktop will fill the entire screen, next, no, skip, skip, we've done that, don't need to do that, Raspberry Pi is now set up. But this is the wrong settings, I'm sure. No scaling. There we go. It's better. But I think we can do better. Let's have a look. So go back look at the config did we miss anything 1920 by 720 hmm what is what am I on all oh. let's have a look Yeah, that should be right. Okay. Okay. Control X. So that should be right. So this is how we're going to interact with the Raspberry Pi. Through VNC, because there's the terminal, you know, which is what we're seeing. So CD, docs, LS. So that's what we're seeing through putty. But then you've got all the different programming languages and, and other stuff. Right, let's see if preferences, screen configuration. Because that's gone down there. And we don't want that. Configure. 
screen, HDMI, resolution. Oh, 1024. 60, normal. That's why it's not the right size. We want it to be bigger than that. Okay, so let's get it to reboot. Shut down, reboot, and let's see if it takes on the new dimensions. And if it doesn't, I'll have to have a look and find out why. Let's uh, do the ping, see if when it comes back on. And there she blows. No. Okay. Pseudo nano. Uh, what was it? Boot slash config dot txt. Did I? Yeah. Right, let's trim that out. Just wondering if it's that. X, yes. Yes, enter. Right, let's reboot it. Let's get it rebooted. See if it uh, takes on the new. Right, wait for it. We're back. Now, because of this um, screen resolution thing, I had to pause the video and do a little bit of research because it worked on the, the three, because I, I, I did it on the three and it worked perfectly. So there must be something unique to um, the Pi 4. And there is, and it was this. So, this person was saying that the uh, Pi 4, you have to rem out this. There's an extra section in the config file for the Pi 4. So, I've got put here. So, do the same sudo nano slash boot slash config dot txt. And sure enough, It's a special section for the Pi 4 that's not in the Raspberry Pi 3. So if we rem that out and then do exit and yes, OK, and then sudo reboot. So we'll let it reboot. So let me find and we'll ping it. Wait for it to turn up. I'll have a drink of my tea. There we go. Right, stop that. And so if we fire up VNC viewer. filled my screen now so that is way too big because you can't see the menu right so we're on a winner here so let me come out of VNC let's go back into um, putty let's reconnect so we'll do the same thing again Let's see what we've got the frame set to. Oh, it's massive. Right, 
So we'll do normal, 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 um, half HD. So that is going to be 1280 by 720. Cancel, cancel. Doesn't like, doesn't like the keypad. This software. Seven twenty. X. Yes. Okay. Pseudo reboot. Let's do the quick ping test again. There we go. We're back. So fire up VNC. We should now be Oh, look at that. Look at that. Let's get it. Look at that. Yep, just the right size for this window. There we go. And there is the Raspberry Pi. So, that's the file system. So here's our documents, there's the share. Permissions, view, change. So that must be what the 777 means. Anyway. Right, so we've now got a Raspberry Pi set to our specifications. Now, I'm not going to install any software on here because I want this image to be the default that um, I apply to any image. So I want the network installed and set up with the share. I want it to recognize NTFS drives. I want it to recognize FAT32 drives. And um, we've now got VNC running. So the Raspberry Pi can now run headlessly. And that is one of the reasons to get this done. So now what we need to do is we need to take the SD card out of the Raspberry Pi and we need to make an image of that SD card and which then we can then apply to other SD cards. So we're straight away when it's applied, we don't have to do any configuration work. We've done it now and we're just going to make an image of that configuration default state. So let's just uh, see what we've got. So programming. So they've put Java in now, so it looks like we can program in Java. Oh, Scratch 3, a new version of Scratch. Uh, Python, of course. Uh, education, oh, that's a uh, smart simulation. Yeah, LibreOffice, got the internet. VNC viewer, so we could actually view others. Uh, media player, Minecraft. Minecraft. Does it work? Ah, oh, doesn't work in this mode. Oh well. I bet it works if we re-enable that Pi Four thing. Oh well. Well we're not gonna use it with We're not gonna be using Minecraft. We might change it though. Close window. No, it's not closing. Maybe it's crashed because of what we've done. Right then. What else is there? PDF viewer, task manager, task manager. Kill it from task manager. Stop. Stop. Kill. Kill. There we go. It's gone. 
Right, so what I'm going to do is we'll shut this down and we'll put the SD card back into the computer and we'll make an image of our setup. Here we go. Right, so we've put the SD card in the machine and as you can see, it's wanting to format stuff and we don't want to do that, so we're going to close it down. That's the boot drive, so we'll close that down and we say cancel to that. Now, to make uh, an image, we need another program and what we need to do is we need win uh, 32 imi disk imager there we go and we need to download this and install that which I've already done yeah so as you can see where is it where is it where is it here I've already got it so what we need to do is we need to run it say okay to that and then we need to tell it where we want to put it so we're going to put it back on here We're going to call it um, default no, buster, so we know what it is. Default dot img. So we're going to create a new image off this card. It doesn't matter which drive we pick because it'll it'll um, image the whole thing. And we want to put it into this image, which is going to be located here. So this is going to take about 15 minutes. So, well, uh, well, it's going to take about 15 minutes for this card because it's the 32 gig one. So we're going to do read, and I'll fast forward it for you. Right, so it's finished. We can, if you want, verify it. So we're going to verify it just to make sure the image is right. So here we go. Right, there we go. So it's verified it okay. So what we're going to do now is there's the image. You know what? 32 gig. But we're going to do one more thing because Etcher, what Etcher does, it can apply an image in zip format, I think. So here we go. So it's Let's see what else can he do? So DSJ raw pi SD card VZ zip. Right, so image ISO zip. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna zip it up. So there's the default image and we'll send it to a compressed folder. So this is now gonna compress it because we don't want to take 32 gig of our hard drive up. Now this may take some time, I don't know, it depends what the compression rate's like. So I'll speed it up for you until it's finished.
Well, there you go. It's uh, it's zipped up. Didn't zip it up by much. Still 26 gig. Hmm. I'll look at that anyway. So there we've done. We've uh, set up our Raspberry Pi and we've created an image for it. So that means now we should be able to take that image and burn it to other SD cards and we'll be in the same situation that we are now where it's set up for VNC, it's set up for all the uh, file formats and um, we can see it on the network. So there you go, that is the new Raspberry Pi 4 unboxed. We've now got a default image, so we can just burn it to any SD card and we'll be in a situation where we don't have to configure it all the time. And the reason we've done this is because the Hunchback um, project that we're going to do, first we're going to do it on here using Python as the language to understand the game map mechanics before we convert it into machine code. and. If you haven't got one of these, don't worry about it. You can download the Raspberry Pi Raspbian desktop and run it in, in a virtual machine, which will give you still the same functionality as a Raspberry Pi, but it'll be running on your machine. And all the things you've just seen me do should apply to that as well. Now, what we're gonna do is um, we're going to code on here, we're going to run it on here, and then, like I say, convert it to machine code. But we really need to understand the mechanics. And I thought, don't, why code it on uh, a Commodore 64? Because that's what we did back then. This is basically the modern day Commodore 64. And I think it'd be interesting to learn what the kids are learning now, which is Python and Pygame, and then move on to the assembly. So I hope you'll enjoy coming on with this journey. Um, I think it's gonna be fun. So with that, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you didn't like the video, fine. Hit the dislike button. Always leave me a comment as I try to answer them all. And if you like what I do and you would like to support the channel, consider becoming a patron of mine. Um, all the money raised in the channel uh, pays for things like this. And with that, I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye. I'd like to thank all the patrons that are contributing to my channel. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing right now. Thank you very much.